wonder why this. Uh, Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to 2017. Uh, I, was, I was talking about, uh, as you can imagine, uh, I'm a highly caffeinated individual much of the time. Um, uh, really, I'm a software engineer. Caffeine uh, is the product that turns lazy software engineers into typing fools, uh, where we just sit in our office and just bang away at a keyboard for a long time and something comes out the end and eventually we ship it. It's a great idea. Um, uh, and everywhere gives you free coffee. Uh, like not even, My first job, they had free coffee, uh, but everyone was expected to put a dollar in the coffee pot every week. Um, and I was the intern and it was never explicitly stated, uh, but the interns were supposed to make and clean the coffee pot more than the other people. Like there were a couple people that when the coffee pot got empty would make the next pot. Um, but a lot of them would, as they walked past my little office with their cup of coffee would go, a Stanfield, fill a coffee pot. Um, and so I spent a summer uh, filling a coffee pot, uh, looking at microfiche um, and writing programs, some of which had been started before I was born. Uh, but that, that's neither here nor there uh, in terms of today's show. Um, it's 2017. Uh, it's January. Uh, if you're watching this on, on the interwebs, on the Facebooks, uh, then you're actually seeing this now. Otherwise, you would think clearly it's got to be 2019 uh, by the time Keith gets these shows edited and out. Uh, but I'm telling you, that's not the way it's going to be anymore because uh, I am giving up uh, on this crazy editing stuff that I try to do to these shows. Like, I, I take the shows home and I import them and then I try to watch them and put crazy text underneath me correcting things and stuff. And that takes a lot of time. Uh, and it's particularly painful because I have to watch myself over and over <laughs> and come up with witty things to say that make me look like an idiot, which is not good for my psyche. Or it is good for my psyche, I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. Um, but not only do I have to come up with funny things to say, I come up with funny things to say that I don't then later say in the same show. Because um, occasionally I've been editing and I've seen myself do something and then I've typed some witty comment and then I keep watching and then on tape from six months earlier, I say pretty much word for word exactly the same thing. And I'm like, well, that's got to really give some ammunition to those there is no free will guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then I have to go back and come up with a different witty comment. Um, anyway, it takes forever to get these things edited, um, and it, it just saps all the life and joy out of it. Uh, so I ain't doing that no more. Um, like, what I'm hoping is I take this home and I hit import, like, this weekend, uh, and I just put the frickin' Keith Explains music at the front, and I'll put some credits at the end. Um, and if I remember saying something particularly hilarious, uh, or something which desperately, desperately needs a subtitle or a correction. I might do it, but I might not. Um, if you're not happy, uh, reflect on how much you paid for the show um, uh, and then move on with your life. Um, okay, like I said, it's 2017. It's the first week of January. Uh, we just had New Year's. Uh, before that, we had Christmas. Um, before that, we had Thanksgiving. You people know how holidays work. Uh, I'm not going to explain it. Um, every year, I get less and less Christmassy. Uh, like 20 years ago, you know, 25 years ago for Christmas, I can recall Loretta and I would sit down, I would get my piece of paper out, and we would write down a list of the names of all of our friends on the piece of paper, and then, like, next to every single friend, like, we, I, we would try to think of what present we were getting them, and I would cross things out and get new things, and we would go to the mall and try to find, we're looking for something for Susie and Stefan, and maybe this, oh, we can't find that, right? Just back and forth, just this piece of paper, and I, I have a couple of these buried deep in my file cabinet, you know, just lots of crossed outs, and we would spend 
hours working on a Christmas card and printing the Christmas cards and then we would print the cards and then we would cut them on our paper cutter and then we would glue them inside of actual Christmas cards like a little newsletter we would glue inside and then we would we would address the envelopes with the labels and the stamps and we'd mail them out and you know the house we had a Christmas tree and we had the garland on the stairs and we had the lights out front and we don't do any of that uh, like for me for Christmas this year for decorating um, I dug out a little Christmas snow globe uh, and then I noticed that it had been in the kitchen so it was kind of greasy so I washed it off and then I put it on the mantle and then <laughs> Christmas decorating is done people we had the snow globe up if you wanted to see Christmas you could pick up the snow globe and you could shake it you could put it down you could be oh look fake snow falling on a fake snowman doesn't make any sense for California but there we go Christmas decorating um, got that done uh, and I normally we used to have icicle lights hanging in the garage and then I'd never take them down and then people would go nice Christmas lights and I'd go no those are President's Day lights <laughs> or I uh, know those are uh, the St. Patty's Day lights uh, St. Patrick a lot of people don't know patron saint of icicles uh, Fourth of July icicle lights they're Australian because um, didn't so I see I took the icicle lights down a couple years ago haven't didn't put them back up because once you take Christmas lights down no matter how good of a job you do put them in a box they will never work again uh, no one knows why uh, apparently Christmas I think it, they probably just design them that way that's how they get more sales of Christmas lights uh, and since they're like eight bucks it's barely worth your time to fold the uh, this year I we actually had lights outside our house, uh, but they weren't lights because I bought one of these laser things that just projects green and red laser dots at your house from far away. <laughs> and they, if you squint, they kind of look like someone has covered your house with green and red Christmas lights. And so I was like, genius. All I have to do is run one extension cord and stick something on the ground. And it's, it's already got a built-in thing to turn on and off at dusk. So I don't have to think about it. So I staked it, put it down, and I was like, I'm done. Took me eight minutes, and four of that was finding the extension cord. Um, took more than eight, because then I had to tape. I had to put a couple pieces of tape down to keep the postman from tripping and suing me on the extension cord. So let's call it 12 minutes, 12 minutes total. And now my house is bespeckled in red and green lights and will be probably until February when it occurs to me to bring it in. Um, although I kind of expect someone will come by my house and go, it's late January, what's going on here? And then he'll just unplug the lights for me. <laughs> and that'll be, that'll be fine, because then the lights won't be on anymore. And eventually I'll be like, I wonder what happened to those lights? And I'll go out and the thing will be in the ground, and I'll bring it in the house, and then it'll never work again. Um, that's Christmas. Um, uh, the parents came out. Parents always come out for Christmas. Uh, like I said before, I moved to California, lived here for a decade, parents visited me twice, uh, brother got married, brother had children, parents visit me four times a year now so they can drive up the peninsula and see my, see my nieces and nephews, see my nephews, their grandchildren. Um, so that was Christmas. Um, I'll briefly touch on Thanksgiving because we didn't tape in December because uh, December's too crazy. Well, with all the stuff I'm not doing. Um, although we did do a lot of stuff. Like we had, we had a couple parties to go to for people. We had a work party up in San Francisco that was nice. At the, we This year was at that Academy of Science thing. Um, the one with the indoor fake rainforest. They're like you can walk through a rainforest. Although really it's only like 170 feet wide and it's three stories high uh, and it's not endangered because we're not going to cut this one down unlike the actual real rainforest. We went up, it was a nice party. We drove up, eat some food. You walk through the rainforest. Uh, we, we saw one of them planetarium shows narrated by that, that Sulu guy from Star Trek <laughs> about planetoids or planets or something. I haven't seen a planetarium show in a long time. Like the last planetarium show that I saw, they still had one of those actual mechanical planetarium things in the middle of the thing 
with a really bright light and they would like shine constellations. And then it was, it was classy because they could also project planets with different things. And they, uh, it's got to have been 30 years ago. Planetarium show. Uh, it was more of a movie. It was really, come to think of it, it was really just more of a movie we watched inside of a large movie theater. It's like, a, it's like an IMAX movie, but vaguely educational. Um, Thanksgiving. Uh, like I said, before that was Thanksgiving. Um, normally we have had the Thanksgiving of lost toys. We invite all of our friends that got nowhere else to go. We're like, hey, come to our house. We'll have Thanksgiving. Uh, and it's a good time is had by all. Uh, because we have booze. Um, but this year, we went to like all of our friends. We're like, hey, if you got nowhere else to go, come to our place. And they were like, no, we got somewhere else to go. We're like, was it last year? Was there too much booze? And they're like, no, it's actually, it's not you. We actually just really have somewhere else to go. Like we have developed other friends. Or look, I'm dating again. Or we've moved to Tennessee. Or that kind of thing, uh, is what I'm saying. Uh, so we, we had nobody coming for Thanksgiving, and I was briefly disappointed. I was like, man, now, we're n now I'm not gonna have to do all that work on Thanksgiving Day. And then it occurred to me that this was great. Um, so, you know, instead of going crazy, cleaning the house, and cooking a bunch of food uh, for people to come over, um, I just got up early in the morning, and I drove to San Jose uh, for the turkey trot run. Uh, because I'm dumb, apparently, <laughs> um, and like to run at 9 o'clock in the morning with a lot of other people. Um, I got in line for the turkey trot, and then I stayed in line 40 minutes while we waited for the line to slowly shuffle towards the starting line. And then I uh, ran my little 10K race, and then I got back in my car, and I drove home, and then I went, man, that was tiring, and I got nothing else to do today. Um, so we didn't do a lot else. We watched a little TV. Um, I already planned to cook a turkey, uh, not because I needed a turkey for Thanksgiving, but because I love leftovers. Um, so my intention was this whole turkey is going to become leftovers. We don't need to eat turkey now. I'm going to cut the turkey, and then we're going to declare the entire thing as leftovers, and then I will make my fried turkey, uh, where you take turkey and you put it in a frying pan with a lot of butter and then happiness happens, <laughs> and then you, you eat buttered covered turkey. It's great, people. Uh, it's the easiest thing in the world. It has two ingredients. One of them's turkey, the other one's butter. Um, I, I guess three ingredients, because you gotta put heat in. Like I think just, I'm not even sure if this is true. Uh, it's possible that just a big brick of cold butter on top of turkey would also be delicious. Uh, but I think if you fry it, it's a little better, because it's warm and it's buttery, uh, you put a little salt on it. Um, that was all working well, uh, although my brother did say, hey, maybe we'll stop by the house on the way back from Jeannie's mother's house. And so they showed up, uh, and then they ate my turkey. Because uh, it, was, it was fine, it was fine, people. I had a backup turkey. I got a backup turkey the next day. I went and got a backup turkey. We, it, it, I'm gonna say though, that Thanksgiving turkey, I don't know exactly what I did, because I've tried to do it since then. Um, but again, we deep fry our turkeys because uh, I hate ovens. Uh, and when I started, my oven was not large enough to cook a turkey in. And it certainly wasn't large enough to cook a turkey in anything else in. It was this small, not quite regulation size oven. Um, and so my friend at work was like, hey, you should just deep fry your turkey. That's what they do in Louisiana. And I was like, okay. And then I went and got one of them propane things and a big bucket. Uh, and then for a couple years, we nearly killed ourselves because um, Consumer Reports every year does that news story about how if you have a huge pot full of oil at 400 degrees right over a flaming thing, occasionally that flaming thing is going to get tired of heating the oil and it is just going to start the oil on fire. Uh, and then you are going to be near flaming oil um, and I don't know if you recall this, but flaming oil is what they used to dump at people that were climbing up your castle walls uh, because it was very effective at killing them. Um, but like a while ago, I bought one of these electric deep fryer things. And that's great because you, you can't catch the oil on fire with the electricity. That's not how it works. So it, now I'm not going to die, but I still get a deep fried turkey 
Um, and in this case, like I bought the turkey, I put it in the I put it in, you brine it for 24 hours beforehand. I don't know why Alton Brown says to do it. Uh, and in this particular occasion, that first turkey we did, freaking delicious um, because it was salty. Um, it was just like the right amount of salty. I loved it. Loretta wasn't as big a fan as I was, but that was a great turkey. Everyone else in the house except for Loretta thought that was a great turkey. Uh, and Loretta thought it was too salty. Okay. <sighs> what else? New Year's Eve. I talked about, I'm talking about holidays, right? New Year's Eve um, and New Year's resolutions because this is the January show. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but I, as a television personality, am required to talk about my New Year's resolutions <laughs> for at least six minutes. Uh, otherwise, they take away my right to be on television. Um, uh, New Year's Eve, uh, we had a quiet New Year's Eve as well. Uh, we did what we do uh, for, I think, 10 years now, um, which is we stay home uh, because we do like to drink, um, but we do not like to drive after having drinked. Um, so we stay at our house and drink, uh, and we watch TV because on TV they have that, that Kathy Griffin and Anderson Cooper do New Year's from Times Square, uh, and mostly Kathy Griffin tries to get Anderson Cooper to blush. Um, and every time she gets Anderson Cooper to blush, we have to drink, uh, which means we drink a lot because um, she is very good at embarrassing Anderson Cooper, and he is, he is very stoic at dealing with it. I don't know why. Uh, I assume it's in his contract, and they pay him well, and they pay her well. But we, we, we like it. Like, we met her many years ago, back when she was with the Waz thing. She was funny then. We watched her show. We watched them now. Um, we do that. Uh, we drink. Um, this year, uh, since California passed this law that decriminalized uh, marijuana, uh, we tried a little of that as well, because <laughs> we are adults and can do that. Um, I'm just going to say New Year's Eve with, with one exception was, was a lovely date. Uh, and the one exception is of course the one that I think is getting to a lot of us, which is, uh, New Year's Eve is the last day of 2016. It's when we become 2017. Uh, and 2017 is when we lose President Obama, uh, and get President Cheeto. So, so that, other than that, I was very happy with New Year's Eve um, and everything else. Um, and the resolutions wise, right? Like I, uh, I am 50 um, and it has occurred to me that I am doing pretty well but could be doing better. Um, so like I, I'm again trying to go jogging more because it is, well, I'm told it is good for me, uh, and it is exercise that I can do that doesn't require equipment. Um, and I did, you know, I ran a half marathon last fall. Uh, I am going to try to run a marathon before I turn 51, because I'm not sure if I can do it now, and I think every year it just gets less and less. Um, but we've been trying to exercise and eat healthier, along with everyone else. Uh, although we can't actually go to the gym for another two or three weeks because uh, it's full of other people that are also <laughs> trying to exercise more now that it's the first week of January or the second week of January. Um, good luck, people. Stick with it. Um, eat more salad. Uh, what else? The other thing I did over the break, and I had a long, I had a long time off because um, I took a couple days off the week before we actually had the break and then just the way dates lined up like I had almost two weeks when I wasn't working uh, which was cool so I was trying to do a bunch of stuff around my house because the other thing I've realized is and I'm kind of a pack rat uh, and I'm not a terribly clean person uh, and it was a long long time ago um, that it occurred to me that I could just pay people to come clean my house and that was beautiful because I hate cleaning my house, but I'm fine with paying other people to do it. Um, so my house isn't filthy, like the, the floors get cleaned every two weeks and the, the, the toilets and the, the sinks and everything get washed down and the mirrors get rinsed off and all the floors get vacuumed, which is fine because although I own a vacuum, apparently it never occurs to me to use it. 
Uh, and I'm thinking that if it was just me in my house, there'd be 20 years worth of dust on top of the carpeting. And people would come by and go, my, this is a very unusual color you've chosen. <laughs> it's almost exactly the color of dirt. I'd be like, I thought it was green when I moved in, but maybe it was dirt colored. Maybe I bought a house with dirt colored carpeting. What if they make dirt colored carpeting? I mean, that'd be genius. That'd be a genius move. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I could hear Loretta scream from the other room about how we weren't gonna have dirt colored. I mean, so I, I, so I've also been trying to fix things, like, like throw away crap I don't need, because it turns out I have a lot of it, uh, and I'm not good at throwing it away. So I'm trying harder. Um, and like I have, like in our master bathroom, like 10 years ago, the linoleum started to peel up at one edge. And it's just been slowly peeling up further and further going along. Just in a way that every time I went to the, into the, the bathroom, it would bug me. But apparently it never bugged me enough to want to replace the linoleum. Because that to me would be a bunch of work. I have, to, I have to learn how to do linoleum and I'm sure it screwed up. Um, and like I priced linoleum. I'm like, this is, this is $40 worth of linoleum. I, I could just go to Home Depot and buy a big piece of linoleum and then I could try to measure my bathroom and then I could screw it up and then I could, you know, I could cut it and then I put it down and go like, look, an inch too short. And then I could go to Home Depot and buy another piece of linoleum for their $40 and I could cut it better and then I could leave it sitting by the bathroom for a year because I hadn't gotten to it yet. Um, and then I could be like, I have to buy linoleum glue. I thought I bought linoleum glue. I wonder what I did with, linole what I did with linoleum glue. I go buy more linoleum glue, and then I wouldn't get to it. And I'd like start to pull stuff up and go, oh, this isn't working. So eventually I was like, I, I am just gonna trade money for a new floor. And I called a guy and I was like, can you put down a tile floor? And he's like, yes, we're a tile floor company. We know how to put down tile floors. I'm like, genius. When can you do it? I'm like, we can do it next week. I'm like, wow, I'd figured you'd be like four years booked out from all the morons that don't do that. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. And then they came and they, they put down a new tile floor in my bathroom and, and, and it was fine uh, and it was done, right? Happiness, when the tiles was loose, I called him, I said, the tile's loose. He came out and said, I'll glue it down. He glued it down, it was great. Tile floor. Uh, I bought one of them video doorbells from my house because, again, I, well, I didn't buy it. Uh, I wanted a video doorbell, so I bought it. And then my mother was like, what am I going to buy you for Christmas? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, you're not helpful. I'm like, do you want to give me a video doorbell? She's like, okay. <laughs> so I took the box I bought and I gave it to her. And then she wrapped it up. And then Christmas morning I went, oh, video doorbell, how did you know? Um, and then I, I installed the video doorbell, which, again, should take half an hour to install this thing, right? You take your doorbell, you pull it out, you unscrew the two screws, you put the new one on, you put it, and I did that, and then like it didn't work. And then I called them up, and they're like, that's weird that it doesn't work. I'm like, yeah, that's weird. And they're like, well, your voltage seems a little low. I'm like, okay, now I gotta find my multimeter. And I found my multimeter, it took like a day. Um, and then I like, this multimeter doesn't work. And I open the multimeter up, and the fuse is blown. And I got to order new fuses from Amazon. It takes three days. The fuses get there. Put the fuses in the multimeter. Still doesn't work. And I'm like, what the heck's going on here? Maybe I've forgotten how to use a multimeter. So I got to Google how to use a multimeter. Um, so then I find the, the instruction manual for my 30-year-old multimeter. Uh, and I'm like, no, I think I'm doing the right thing. And I'm like, maybe I don't understand how doorbells work. So then I'm taking things off the wall, and then I'm like, oh, good Lord, it's, doorbells are AC, not DC, and I gotta use a different, so I flipped it over to the AC side, and look, oh, look, the voltage is too low, right? We're like a week later. We're like a week into doorbell replacement. <laughs> like, if you showed up at my house, there are just two wires hanging by the front door where the doorbell used to be. Uh, so I'm like, well, I guess I gotta replace my doorbell transformer. It is 40 years old. Maybe they go bad. Um, so I ordered a new doorbell transformer. And I'm like, well, now I gotta find my doorbell transformer. It's somewhere in my house. And I know where the wires are at the doorbell. And I know where the wires are at the doorbell chime. And I'm like, well, if I put my little camera sticky thingy in the wall, I can see that the wire goes up through the things. So maybe it goes up to the attics. Then I'm digging around in the attic for the doorbell thing and it's not up there. 
and I'm digging around. Maybe it maybe it goes up from where the doorbell is, and I'm digging around up in the attic there. And that's that's like another five days worth of work there. Uh, and then finally, I called someone that has a house like mine, whose house isn't a disaster, and whose attic isn't filled with crap. And I said, "Do you have any idea where the doorbell transformer is?" And he said, "Yeah, it's on the water heater." I'm like what? <laughs> Sure enough, it's right next to the water heater. There's no reason it should be there, people. I mean, this, this is not a place for a doorbell transformer. Um, so then I replaced that, and then clicky, clicky, wire, wire, uh, and then my, then my doorbell kind of started working. So like three weeks. It took me three weeks to replace the doorbell. should take half an hour. Uh, that means all the other stuff I'd hope to do, uh, not all of it, like uh, not only do I have a video doorbell now, um, but I have a lock on my front door that I can that I can lock and unlock over the internet. Like, watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now while we're waiting. Okay, I'm gonna clicky clicky. Uh, I bought one of them internet-enabled door locks. See, and I just gotta find the app, and then then I click the button, and then at home my door will unlock. So if you want to rob my house, <laughs> all you have to know is where I live. Um, and ready? Three, two, one. Okay. God, I hope it works. Otherwise, I've ruined this TV show, people. Um, yeah, yeah, my door's unlocked. So if you want to rob my house, now is the time. Ha! No, it's not. Um, I got one of them. Uh, we, installed, we installed one of them Amazon Alexas in the kitchen. Because, uh, again, I got more money than cents, apparently. Uh, and I was like, wow, that's $100? Okay, here's a thing. Now I'm going to put a thing in my kitchen that I can talk to when I'm lonely. Um, so when I get up in the morning, I go down into my kitchen, and I start making my coffee, and I say, hey, Alexa, what's my flash briefing? Now, the great thing is, across America, anyone that's watching this TV show right now is getting a flash briefing from their Alexa. Um, uh, but then it tells me some news, and then I can ask it questions like, hey, Alexa, how many tablespoons in four cups? And it'll tell me. Uh, and really, that's all that I do with it. Like, I'm told I can ask it a lot of other questions. Oh, and Audible. Like, I can tell it to play my Audible books, um, which is kind of handy, considering that I've only ever listened to two. Oh, we're out of time. We're out of time, people. I didn't even get to Westworld or Lucifer <laughs> or Rogue One or Arrival. We saw Arrival, people. It's a movie. Uh, go see it before it's not in the theaters anymore, because it, it'll be good on a big screen. You'll like it. Uh, well, the Nerd Cruise, Nerd Cruise, November, March 4th. Uh, I'm going to be on the nerd, nerdboat.com. Come be on a cruise with ner me and nerds. <laughs> Are we still rolling credits? Anyone know? It's funny. I mean, I guess the right is still staring at something. So, yeah, there's still credits rolling. There are words rolling past my face right now. Not if you're watching on Facebook. There's no words on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but the moment Loretta pushes that stop broadcasting live, this goes away on Facebook until I post it again. Uh, so if you're watching this live, you're seeing, you saw some stuff at the beginning that won't be there. Uh, you didn't see any titles, uh, but you'll see stuff. Uh, this is very long for credits, is what I'm saying. I'm very, very confused uh, about whether that was actually the end of the show or not.